Hi folks, HR Funk here. Back out on the range with another one of my Law Enforcement Qualification Course Challenge videos. Now if you're not familiar with this series, what I'm attempting to do is to fire a Law Enforcement Firearms Qualification Course from each of the 50 states for the purposes of comparing and contrasting those courses and ultimately determining what I think is the best Law Enforcement Firearms Qualification Course in the country. At this point, I have 30 of the 50 states. I still need 20 more. So if you have access to your state's Law Enforcement Firearms Qualification course and you can get me a copy of the course, please let me know in the comment section of this video. Also, if you can get me a target or two, especially if your state uses something other than the FBIQ target, let me know that as well and I'll give you the information as to where to mail those materials to. Today's course comes to us from the state of North Dakota. North Dakota uses a 50 round qualification course that's divided into six stages of fire. The stages of fire take place at distances from as far away as 15 yards away from the target and as close as five yards from the target. There are different drills that are fired at each stage along the way and I'll explain each drill so you know what you're about to see before I fire it. At the end, in order to be considered qualified, the shooter has to have 35 of the 50 rounds inside the light area of the Q target that I have on the target board back here, which means that North Dakota has a qualification standard of 70%. Any shots striking outside of the light colored silhouette receive no value, only those striking inside are scored toward qualification. Now if you've been following this series, you know that to the degree that I can, I'm trying to fire these courses with historical firearms. Today's firearm, or today's challenger I should say, comes from my own history as a law enforcement officer. This is my Smith & Wesson SW99 chambered for the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge. This was my duty pistol from the year 2000 up until 2007 when the department replaced these pistols with the then new Smith & Wesson M&P. And I've got to make a couple of comments about the SW99 right here at the beginning of the video. I have heard and read that some departments have problems with their SW99s. I have never had a problem of any sort with this pistol. When we originally received these back in the year 2000, we did have an issue with the slides locking open with ammunition still in the magazine. We contacted Smith & Wesson and they were aware of that problem and they replaced all of our magazines and that problem went away. The only other issue I ever noticed with these pistols during the seven years that we carried them is the rear sight can be somewhat fragile and if you look very closely there is a small tab right there I'm not sure if you can see it or not right there that holds the rear sight in place if the sight receives a blow of sufficient force it can break that little tab off of there and the sight will essentially fall out of the pistol we had that happen with a couple of ours but again it takes a pretty good blow and it was not a major problem when it did happen we got a hold of Smith & Wesson sent the pistol back and they repaired them. Otherwise, as I said, I never had any issues whatsoever with my SW99. Now for those of you not familiar with the SW99, it's essentially a copy, a fairly close copy, of the Walther or Valter P99. And in fact, this was a joint project between Valter and Smith & Wesson. Valter made the entire lower half of the pistol and if you notice on this side, you'll see their logo right there. Smith & Wesson made the entire upper half. Smith & Wesson also did the final assembly of the SW99, and it was sold under the Smith & Wesson brand name through the Smith & Wesson distribution system. One other comment I'd like to make about the SW99 pistol is specific to its action. Although this is a striker-fired pistol, and you can see as I squeeze the trigger, at least I think you can see, the striker coming back to the rear of the slide. It still has a double action pull for the first shot and then a single action pull for each successive shot. You don't see that too often with a striker fired pistol and that is a characteristic of both the Smith & Wesson SW99 and also the Valter P99. All right, folks, it's time to get started on this North Dakota handgun qualification course. The course starts out at a distance of 15 yards from the target, and we're going to see something in this course that we haven't seen before up to this point. 
and that is the course requires some physical exertion on the part of the shooter before he or she starts to shoot their way through the course. Actually what the course description specifies is the shooter has to run in place for two minutes and then after that's finished there is a signal to fire and the shooter has to fire six rounds standing from behind the barricade and then six rounds kneeling from behind the barricade all in a time limit of 25 seconds. Now I'm not going to make you suffer through two minutes of watching me run in place so I will take video of it but when I edit the video I'll speed it up so we get through that quickly. When I get done with the two minutes I'll push the button on my timer. When it gives me the signal to fire I'll fire my six rounds standing and then my six rounds kneeling. One thing that's convenient with the SW99 is it does have a 12 round magazine limit so I won't have to reload between my standing stage and my kneeling stage. Set a timer for two minutes. And here we go. And that's two minutes. And this is what it looks like when you shoot through a stage and forget to activate your second camera. So unfortunately, there was no video of these shots actually impacting, but all 12 of them are within the proper area on the cue target. So no problems from the barricade shooting from 15 yards. Now let's move up to stage two and see how that goes. Stage two of the North Dakota handgun qualification course takes place at a distance of 10 yards from the target and this is fired entirely with my non-dominant hand. On the signal of fire, I have 25 seconds to fire 12 rounds with my non-dominant hand. Now the course description does not specify whether the pistol begins in the holster and I transfer it to my non-dominant hand or if I can start this stage with the pistol already in my hand. Since it's silent on that particular issue, I assume that it is either the choice of the instructor conducting the qualification course or the shooter who's undergoing qualification. So I'm going to start this stage with the pistol in my non-dominant hand and on the signal to fire I'll fire out my 12 rounds. And all 12 of those shots stayed inside the white part of the target. This one tried to make it out, but it's still completely inside that area. So all those shots are good. It's time to move on to stage three, and we'll give that one a try. Folks, I'm not sitting down to recuperate from that two minutes of running in place at the beginning of the qualification course. Well, okay, maybe I am. But I'm also sitting down because this is the position that I'm going to shoot the next stage of this qualification course from. Stage three of the course also takes place at a distance of 10 yards from the target, and this time I'm firing from a sitting position. And this is something we've not seen before. 
And in fact, it's not sitting on the ground, but the course description specifies seated in a chair. So on the signal to fire, I'll have 15 seconds to draw and fire six rounds from this sitting position into the body of the target. For stages four and five of this North Dakota handgun qualification course, I'm up to a distance of seven yards from the target. From here, in stage four, I begin with the pistol secured in the holster, and on the signal to fire, I have five seconds to draw and fire three rounds into the body of the target. That drill is repeated one time for a total of six rounds in stage four. In stage five, I once again begin with the pistol secured in the holster. On the signal to fire, I have to draw and fire six rounds into the body of the target, then perform a mandatory reload and fire six more rounds into the body of the target, all within a time limit of 20 seconds. Sixth and final stage of this North Dakota handgun qualification course, folks. For this stage, I'm up to a distance of five yards from the target, and from here, on the signal to fire, I have to draw and fire two rounds into the body of the target in a time limit of three seconds. And it's time for the tail of the target, folks. Of the 50 rounds that I fired during this North Dakota handgun qualification course, all 50 of them are within the proper scoring area of the Q target. All 50 shots were fired within the allotted time limits, so based on my calculations, this represents a perfect score on the North Dakota course. Now in this course, we saw some elements that we've seen before in other qualification courses. We saw barricade shooting, we saw shooting from alternate positions, meaning standing and kneeling. We saw non-dominant hand shooting. We saw mandatory reloading stages. But we also saw a couple of things we haven't seen before, beginning with the exertion on the part of the shooter before starting this course. The running in place for two minutes was not extremely strenuous, but it was something to get the shooter's heart rate up a little bit and to try to simulate stress. And you may recall in my evaluation protocol for the qualification courses, I've got a simulated stress stage in there so North Dakota will get credit for the simulated stress when I plug this into my evaluation matrix. Also, we've not seen before the shooter firing from a seated position, and I mentioned this in my first evaluation video after I completed my first 10 state qualification courses, that shooting from a seated position I think is important as a distinction from other shooting positions, being standing, kneeling, prone, or whatever, 
Because of the amount of time that officers spend in a cruiser, and I know of at least one instance where an officer was engaged while still seated in his cruiser and had to return fire out the window with his non-dominant hand, no less, from the driver's seat. We've also seen situations nationwide where officers have been ambushed while sitting in coffee shops and things like that. So I think shooting from a seating position is an important skill and it's an important distinction to have from other shooting positions. And again, North Dakota will get credit for that when I plug it into the matrix. And folks, let's hear it for our challenger today. My old duty pistol didn't let me down. The SW9940 pulled off a perfect score on the North Dakota handgun qualification course. Now remember, when I complete this group of 10 qualification courses, you get to choose your favorite firearm. When I make the last video in this group of 10, I'll review or recap all of the pistols that I've used up to that point in this group of 10 qualification courses. And then for the period of one week, I'll take votes. And whichever pistol gets the most votes from you, the viewers, is the one that's going to be the favorite for this group of 10 qualification courses. Now you may recall in the very first one of this group of 10, I used a Sig Sauer P227. The second video in this group of 10 was a Glock 23 chambered for the 40 Smith & Wesson. In the last video, I used a Smith & Wesson Model 19 revolver, and this time around, it's my SW99, again chambered for the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge. And that's it for this video, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, as always, be sure to forward those to me. Remember, if you order anything from Optics Planet, be sure to use my discount code, which is... And if you use that discount code, it's good for 5% off anything you order from Optics Planet. See you next time, folks, and until then, good shooting. Bye-bye.